Good morning, and thank you for joining us for today's webinar. My name is Tim Cerniglia. I am the Southwest Regional Manager for Schmidt. Kyle Williams from our tech support team is with me to answer your questions, so if you have any questions during the webinar, please enter them in the chat box on the right side of your screen, and Kyle will reply. As time permits, he'll also answer some of your submitted questions on air at the end of the webinar. Today, we'll be talking about laser marking with vector files, but before we get to that, let's quickly review the difference between vector files and raster files. Raster files are images made of tiny squares that contain color information. The squares are called dots or pixels, and the number of pixels in the image make up the image's resolution. Some of the most common types of raster files include JPEGs and bitmaps. Vector files are images in which software calculates and draws lines or vectors between points. Some of the most common types of vector files include encapsulated postscript and drawing exchange format files. If you were at our previous webinar, you may remember that when you resize a vector file, the software redraws the lines between the image's points so you can make the image larger or smaller without affecting the quality of the image. The quality of a raster image, on the other hand, is limited by its resolution. If you enlarge a raster image, at some point it will start looking blurry and pixelated. It's important to note that you can't turn a raster image into a vector image by changing the file name's extension. If you have a raster image and you want to turn it into a vector file, you'll have to recreate it in a vector editing software such as Adobe Illustrator. Some software may include tools to convert a raster image into a vector image, though you may not get the desired results when using those. With vector files, you just have to do two things before importing the file into your laser software. The first is remove duplicate or overlapping lines. In these pictures, you can see when the two squares are put right next to each other, the two lines in the middle overlap. If your logo has any overlapping lines like this, you'll need to delete one of the lines. Secondly, check to make sure that all your shapes are fully closed. In this image, you can see that the lines that make up this square don't meet at the corners. If your logo has shapes with openings like this, you'll need to close them before importing the file into your laser marking software. So here you can see that we've imported our logo into our laser software, SCAPS. Keep in mind that if you're using other software, you may not have the same exact settings as we're showing you here, but you should have settings that function similarly. The logo is obviously way too big, so we need to resize it. Because this is a vector image, we can resize the image in SCAPS without worrying about affecting the quality of the image. So we will go into the Dimension tab and in the Outline section, change the value in the X and Y DM boxes. I'm going to check the Keep Aspect Ratio box so that when I change one of the dimension values, the other will automatically be calculated. Now that our logo is a reasonable size, we could mark it just like this. So let's go ahead and do that. Before we do, notice that the logo has no fill, only an outline. So this is going to be a very quick mark. For today's demo, we'll be using our GeoMark Pro. The GeoMark Pro is a class one laser system that comes standard with a 20 watt laser, powered door, and powered Z-axis.
So this looks pretty good, and if all you need is an outline of your logo, that's all there is to it. But one of the advantages of using a vector file is that not only can you include a fill, but you have a lot of control in how the logo is filled. That's all done in the Hatch tab. There are a lot of options here, but we'll only go over the essential ones for filling. That's the distance and angle options. There are some default values there already, so let's just click enable and see what happens. Okay, so now the logo is filled. It seems like it just turned red, but if we zoom in, we can get a better idea of what's actually going on. Basically, enabling a hatch will fill the logo with lines. The distance tells the laser how far apart those lines should be. The angle tells the laser at which angle the lines should go. The default settings in our software set the distance at 0.05 millimeters and the angle at zero degrees. So we're seeing horizontal lines that are very close together. If we change the angle to 90 degrees, the lines will go straight up and down. To get a really nice fill, we recommend starting with a distance at 0.05 millimeters and doing two hatches, one at a zero degree angle and one at a 90 degree angle. That looks like this. We'll mark this now. And here's the result. Because the lines were so close together and because we made two passes at different angles, the logo has a nice, even, solid fill. Depending on your logo and the look you're going for, you may want to try different distances and different angles. Just to give you an example of something different, we'll make one hatch with a distance of 0.09 millimeters and an angle at 45 degrees. This logo looks fine, though the fill isn't as solid as the previous mark with two hatches. So those are the basics of laser marking logos with vector files. Marking with vector files can be simple and generally we recommend using vector files over raster files whenever possible. You don't have to worry about image resolution when it comes to vector files. They're also more versatile and they usually require less prep work than a raster image. If you would like more information on this topic or marking in general, you can visit us on the web at www.gtschmidt.com. You can surf the site for information and videos about laser marking and other types of marking as well. The news section in particular is a great resource on the site for marking info. You can also follow us on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter for tips and updates. Thanks again for joining us today. And from everyone here at Schmidt, we hope you have a great weekend.